Hello, this is a Jay the Shark and friends. And Russell. Mm, and Russell podcast. And on today's show, we're talking to Britney Spears fan and marketing guru, Christine Liu. Malaysian-born Christine came to Phuket to be the director of marketing for Dream Hotel and Dream Beach Club. She was part of the marketing team at Blue Tree Phuket before she decided to take some time off and work on setting up her own marketing agency, working on some F&B concepts and being an amazing person looking after street dogs. Super smart, beautiful and an all-round top lady. Christine Liu is awesome. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the podcast. So the benchmark is Party Marty. Like his voice on a podcast was, hello. So I've decided that I'm going to up, you're up him. Up your game I'm going to up. Are you going to put on a, Sorry, I've, I'm sat here with my leg up. I'll I pre- look quite... I will pretend not to see any of don't that. No, <laughs> like, checking out my ghoulies. <laughs> not checking um, anything out. I just think that you do need a wax. But Chrissy uh, Lou, Christina Lou, Chris... What, what, what's your real name? Liu Wai Lam. Give it a go. Do what? Give it a go. Liu Wai Lam. Say it. Liu Wai Lam. Almost there. L- Liu Wai Yam. Mm-mm. Go again. Liu Wai Yam. Liu Wai Lam. Liu Wai Lam. Is it Lam or Yam? Lam. Because you're yummy. So that's my Chinese name, but I go by Christine. Christine, so you've decided that Party Marty, Marty from Taste, is the benchmark of our podcast. In the last 50, 56, 46 podcasts, you've only listened to one, obviously. No, you haven't, because there was someone else you listened to. Yeah, who, who was Sean not mentioned? Shh. <laughs> was it Darian Fox? <laughs> So that was really early on, wasn't it? It was Foxy. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was last year. That was when I first fancied her. Was it last year? You still fancy her, so I do still fancy her. She's lovely. Well, to, in, in for Jay's sake, it, she's female and has a pulse. <laughs> it's yeah. I was going to say a really terrible joke that what, no pulse was uh, optional. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> and, 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 see, Jay just says this. At least once a day when we're in the office, I'm going to say a really a day, terrible <laughs> joke. <laughs> and then he just stops at that. Okay. Chrissy, uh, you're Chinese-ish. Mm, I'm Malaysian, but yes, I'm We think Chinese you're Sing- Singaporean. No, I'm not. I'm 100% Malaysian. What's better, Singapore or Malaysia? Malaysia, 100%. Well, it depends who you ask, really. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've been t- better, Eng- the English or the Scottish? Well, depends who... Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Right. Mm, Malaysian, for sure. Not... And uh, born so and go yeah, on. What? Well, so where where are you born? Where are from? Who okay. are you? Da, da, da. So I am from Malaysia, born in Salango. But when I say Salango, nobody knows who Salango is. Everyone knows. Kuala we Lopo. interviewed him a few podcasts back, didn't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who? He used to run Catch FM. Yeah, that's true. Silvano. Yeah. Where's he from? Uh, Portugal. Portugal. Sorry. Did I just lose? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Where's Silvano in Malaysia? No, it's not Silvano. Silvano it's Selangor. Okay, that was the joke. We oh. thought you said Silvano. It's a little island. Th- this is going to take, no, lo- <laughs> take a long time if we have to explain every joke. No, please okay. don't. All right. You make me look stupid now. I don't think it's no, it's me, <laughs> it's me that's stupid. No, no. So Silvano in I've Malaysia. Heard of, I've heard of Selangor. It's okay. Yes, there you go. So KL is the capital city in Selangor. There you go. What? Oh, I don't know anything about Malaysia. I've flown to Malaysia for visa runs. Into mm-hmm. KL. Yeah. No, and no, and I went to Penang or KL? I went to Penang. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Penang is another state up north yeah. of Malaysia. Right. So Selangor is another state. It's the biggest state. So it's... When you say, okay, KL. so it's like Greater London and then London is the capital city. I'm yeah. looking at Russell for that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. My Russell. Um, <laughs> the, what? <laughs> um, so you were born there? Yeah. Born, raised there. I actually was there until I was 23, then I moved to Singapore. So last, last year? Because you're not that old, are you? I'm not that old. I'm forever 21, actually. But Good shot. Yeah. Mm. So I, was all my stuff from there. I moved from KL to Singapore when I was 23 or 24. I can't really remember. And I moved to Phuket when I was 26 or 27. What brought you to Phuket? 
So I was working for a real estate developer in Singapore and they opened up a hotel and beach club here, which you guys know, Dream Phuket and Dream Beach Club. So I was um, working in Singapore for the owner and six months into opening, he decided, just to keep the long story short, he decided to have me here. Sweet. So it was supposed to be a short stint. It was supposed to be just a six month stint to just kind of get the marketing up and running, you know, set the foundations and also to hire and expand the marketing team here. But six months into it, you know, he, we really couldn't find someone suitable. So, so you were doing marketing in Singapore for, yeah. it, was it, you were working for the castle, was it? That Castle group? group Castle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're doing marketing for that. And is that what you studied at school? Yes. So oh. I studied marketing, majored in international business. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's why you're so smart and beautiful. Ah, oh, thank you. Just like you, Jeff. No, I didn't study at school. And I'm not be- I am beautiful. Yeah, I feel beautiful, actually, right. in my new haircut today. Which you, look, you look amazing. No, you really? Look, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kate. Do hairdresser. You haircut? I think you need a new haircut. I need to. I was almost going to do it short, but then my, my professional hairdresser, Kate. Um, Kate Hairdresser, because that's her name. Um, she said I should keep it long because it's really hot at the moment and uh, it's easier to manage. I, I just think she was lazy and couldn't be asked to cut it, to be fair. That was my view. Yeah. Oh, she doesn't listen. It's all right. <laughs> um, okay, so you studied marketing and then yes. ended up in Phuket yeah. to market the hotel or yes. the beach club? Both. Oh, okay. So I was the marketing director for both. Right, so I did that for about three years and then I thought, you know what? Oh, I wanted to t- take a break, and then Blue Tree happened. So well, I did slow point. down. Okay. Let's go back We're to missing a couple of key ingredients. Yeah, okay. tell okay. us about Dream Beach Club and the people. That's well, so and the management. Yeah, tell us everything. Uh, you know what? Lip seal. <laughs> but no. <laughs> what can we talk about with you today? Is there? Okay. You, I sent you the list of stuff we were going to talk about. And you've come back and said, we can't talk about this, no, this, this, really this, this, and this. We went really like, right into stuff, like, why do you move? Well, that's what we want to know. Why you got here? Ho- I, was actually doing, I was actually doing my homework. So when you sent me the list of stuff that we would potentially talk about, I actually went, oh, all right. So I like, did homework, all right, well, you, look. Notes, so, so tell and us about then. your childhood then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, you know, that, that was something interesting. So I haven't been home, like, I haven't been home permanently for the past, what, seven, seven years? No, wow. it's almost eight Eight years, I think, eight years this year, right? Well, you've not been back to Malaysia? I've not stayed in Malaysia okay. for more than two weeks for the past eight years. Okay. So when, when I was thinking of that question, actually, I was, I was like, hang on, like, what's home like? And you know what? When I was growing up, there was no technology, like, no mobile phones, no like PlayStation, us, right? no console. All I remember was playground and parks and lots of dirt running around and jumping in the pools and stuff. And... And I was just, I was just out uh, on, on the conference, not out on the conference call with my friend. So she has uh, two kids, another on the way. And when we were on a conference call, she was just trying to distract her kids with all these different iPads and all these laptops. And I was like, where are we today? But anyway, sorry. Can I, uh, no, that's a very good point. I'll tell you where we are today. With the Coffee fact, <laughs> here we are at Coffee Club, um, Club in Boat Avenue. Avenue. Where very will lovely. I meet you? Yeah, uh, wh- it says, well, yeah. Where yeah, that's w- oh. Where will I meet you? Yeah. That's a hell of a tagline, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Haven't you seen that? Haven't you noticed that walking up I the know, stairs? Ju- I just noticed no. it on the coaster yeah. as well. Is it on the coaster, is it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, I see. The ch- the, so the, what they're the trying to say line. is is the tagline is where I'll meet you because they want... Where will I meet you? Oh, we'll meet you at the coffee club. That's right. Ah, it's clever. Uh, bullshit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that kids growing up with iPads and stuff... I don't think there's too much wrong with that, although people yes, disperse it. Kids. No, but the point being is, this is where technology's going. Mm. So the fact, okay, yeah, we used to play outside and play in the park and all that kind of stuff and light fires and set fireworks off and do all the kind of stuff mm. that I used to do. But, you know, we didn't have computers. To, or we had an Atari XL to play with, which yeah. took mm. four hours mm. for one game to load up. You have to sit there and just go... True, I remember the dialogue. Yeah, exactly. But now, you know, they've got this technology. I think they should use it. Now, it shouldn't be used too much. And I hate it when I see kids, especially at restaurants, where mm. the parents are talking and the kids just mm. sat there, eyes down, watching it. Mm. But there is a place for technology. Because the kids are going to grow up. Yep. And they, sh- they need to True. be able to use this stuff. On that particular True. note, can I also say, if there's going to be a place for technology with kids, there has to be a place for fucking headphones with it. There is nothing that winds me up more than some kid or even some adult on the table yeah. behind you watching a movie playing yeah. a game and you can just hear this just 
put some fucking headphones in. Yeah. Or turn the volume off. Imagine 10 iPads all going off together. Yeah. Different music. Do you know what I hate? Dogs. <laughs> Friggin' mm-hmm. dogs. And I hate people Turtles, that have got dolphins. dogs. On that note... Who, who s- else who got added to my list the other day? Oh, it's a long list, mate. Oh, dim sum pug. <laughs> oh, oh, it's tacos. Tacos are on my list now. Taco pug? What? Oh, uh, well, our friend, who we shall not name, puppies, uh, right said Fred, um, she went out and had Tuesday tacos at Chef Daniel's place and didn't invite us. So tacos got added mm. to my list of hatreds. Ah. Hatreds? Things that I hate. Things that I hate. Hatreds. Back to you. Yeah. What was growing up like in Malaysia? Fun. I miss the people and I miss the diversity of culture, I guess. But then again, that's what I like about Phuket. Because that's what I get here as well. So back home in Malaysia, I speak three different languages depending on who I hang out with. Like I can speak Malay, I can speak Cantonese, I speak English, a bit of Mandarin as well. Cool. I do also speak Indonesian. I used to live in... She's just showing off. It's a yeah. shame it's not a video Sorry. podcast because your little smile then, looking at both of us like that, going, fuck Check you, fuck out. you, <laughs> fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you. What languages do you speak? I don't even speak English. English and bad Watch English. your language, Jay. If I had a swear jar here, right? I would be, you would be retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair That's enough. That's an understatement. I yeah. apologise in front of a beautiful lady. I shouldn't swear. I like your shoes today, by the way. They Thank are very, very beautiful. Much. I know. Lots of people compliment my shoes. Um, would you like a pair? No. <laughs> so the Dream Beach Club yeah. journey. Right. Don't have to go into details about it, but you hadn't done beach club kind of marketing no. stuff before. So actually, so that was interesting. So working for... Dream was the first was my first foray into hospitality. Actually, before that, when I was in working, uh, when I was in Singapore and Malaysia, I've always done um, a more B two C in a sense, which is um, I was in a PR agency. I was working for a shopping mall. Um, I was working for a MNC engineering company. So the experience and the skills that required was very different. So when I first moved here, um, and you know. The, the first thing was that I had to spend a lot of time with so many different people and I got to meet so many different people, um, not just locals, but tourists who were traveling, expats who were living here or, you know, moving around. So, yeah, so it was a very interesting one, actually. Did you like Dream? Yes, I did, actually. I did. I enjoyed working there very much because I learned a lot of new things. I learned to work for a hotel. I learned the in and out of the hotel operations, beach club. I never considered myself to be a foodie, but when I was working for the beach club, um, a majority of what I had to do was to promote the theme days, their Sunday brunches, the pool parties, and it was really quite an eye-opener for me to learn all of this stuff, which, you know, if you're, like, for example, when I was in a PR agency, right, I was taking care of uh, tech clients like LG, um, I was uh, like Dr. Dre by Beats. um, Sorry, Dr. Dre? Beats by Beats. Dr. Dre, sorry. Beats by Dr. Dre. You weren't marketing Dr. Dre, because hey, you've done a great job for that. No, no, no. I've heard of him. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so Isn't he dead now? That? No, he's still alive. Is he? Oh, that's Tupac. Who was the other one? Biggie. Tupac. Biggie. Biggie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, anyways. Um, so, yeah, so it was... Where was I? I I've lost track. You distracted me with what's that? So what? No, Russell was drinking my drink. We I share. Just, I, just, I just fancied a slurp. Uh, I won't tell him about my sore throat and my dry cough and the fact I can't taste anything at the moment. Wear your mask right now. I do have my mask somewhere. I don't know where it is. That's funny. Every time I see Jay, he's always with a mask. It's only today that you're without a mask. It's difficult to do a <laughs> podcast <laughs> with a <laughs> mask on. <laughs> I know. I know. Although, I know. I actually, going off the subject, well, off, we're always going off the subject. Yeah. Um, I, my kids went back to school yesterday and Ashton's teacher is a lovely Spanish teacher, but she has to wear a mask when she teaches. Mm-hmm. She's got a beautiful Spanish accent, which is lovely, but very difficult to understand anyway, mm-hmm. let alone when you've got a mask on, bless yeah. her. <laughs> Poor Ashton. It's, it's a oh bit well. like, remember the um, Charlie Brown cartoons? No. Okay. Russell likes Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown? Remember Charlie Brown? Snoopy? You nev- Mm-mm. Whoa, 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 hold the phone. You guys don't remember Snoopy. No, I, even, I, know, I don't have a go at me. Like don't Snoopy, the guys. comic character? Yeah. The, the, yeah, okay, yes. You bet yes, you ever see the cartoon of On it? On TV. She no? was too busy lighting fires and playing in playgrounds and stuff. Good point, well made. Did you no, burn my, anything down? No, the, my, my childhood was Power Rangers. Do you guys know Punky Brewster? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do know Punky okay. Brewster. Uh, I, think you're about I, think, I think you'll find Punky Brewster was very American and very... Because for me... Um, growing up, because I grew up in Hong Kong and Singapore, but the my influences, Hong Kong. yeah, yeah, oh. my influences are very that? much American. Ah. So things like like speaking to him or other sort of British friends, and they make British pop and TV references, and I'm like, 
No, I didn't really have that in my childhood. It was mm. more like the Smurfs, Punky Brewster, stuff like that, Silver Spoons. Right. I'm all of that, but it's very much more American influenced. Oh. So no but Button Punky Moon. Punky Brewster was great. Yeah. You didn't have Button Moon. I had Button Moon. Oh, there you go. See, I'm glad. Like, there are a lot of people that I, when I say Punky Brewster, they're like, what? What's that? Yeah, no, no, but yeah. it's, it's a very niche. It's like, yes. I remember that. I know. I, I wouldn't be able to sit here and explain what Punky Brewster is. I know the, the name, the brand name I know. However, I still think you're a lot younger than I am because the Punky Brewster came... You're you do. Yeah. About sort of mid, early mid You're 30s, such a so. dick. <laughs> He's a dick. <laughs> he is a dick, isn't he? Edit that out. No, <laughs> I'm not. All Russells are dicks in my <laughs> mind. Um, <laughs> where were we? The Dream Beach Club. Yeah. So did you... Did you um, so part of Dream obviously being a beach club and a nightclub. So were you there quite... Because obviously doing beach club marketing is mm. very different from doing... You know, you're, it's oh. a nine to five job normally. Yeah. But then as a beach club, it's not nine to five. So were you, how was your hours and how was the work you environment? You know what? I don't remember having a day off when I used to work for a dream because it will be Monday to Fridays for the hotel and then well peak is usually during Friday weekends for for you know for club. the beach club yeah so I'll be there on the beach club Friday night Saturday and Sunday so a, a lot of my time when I was at dream was spent working um, didn't really take holidays until uh, towards the end but yeah but it was fun it was really really fun I was an alcoholic I was going to say alcoholic, but no, I was going to say workaholic. The right word is workaholic. <laughs> no, I think the right word is alcoholic, you know, to be fair. I was at taste yesterday, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, how was taste? You did go to taste last night. Well, yes, we say we're recording this on Friday at Coffee Club in Boat Avenue. Other boats are available, of course. And you went to taste to their right. wine and tapas night. Yeah, wine and, and tapas And you went night. there because you listened to our podcast last week with Party Marty. You mentioned it, yes? That's not right, actually. I'm a regular at taste. so I've. You're not old enough to be a regular at taste. <laughs> you've, still got, you've still got your teeth. <laughs> I have been going to taste ever since I moved here. See, like, a lot of their clients say they've been going to taste since the end of all days, but you know. Mm. Is that too many old jokes about Actually, taste, that makes me it? sound old, doesn't it? I should stop saying stuff like that. I should like, make myself sound really young. You I do am, look I young. Am. I wouldn't know how, I wouldn't put an age on you apart from young. We're not going to have this discussion for yeah, the podcast. Are. No, yeah, we're not. we are. We're having it right now. <laughs> I'm going to go silent. I'm not okay. going to ask how old you are. What were you born? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So after Dream, then tell yeah. us about your journey after Dream. Where did that take you? You would know. I don't, you don't share get that journey. involved in this. <laughs> <Don't get laughs> if you edit that at the right time, mm. where did your journey take you after Dream? The, first, yeah. the next word that she comes out with is yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> this, is, this is an interesting thing. So before and if you edit that correctly... <laughs> Before I joined Blue minute. Tree, before That's I joined really Blue Tree. Awkward looking little. Oh, yes, thing. come to Coffee Club and, and Boat Avenue. Other avenues are available. Go upstairs, and there's some cactuses that look like it's got a massive penis. In fact. I'm glad you saw that as well. No, no, no. So, that, imagine having a video of that and then just reading out what they wrote. <laughs> coffee, coffee, coffee time, time with me and a cactus dot, with dot, a massive dot, penis. Me. I think the happiness is homemade is the better one. Right, we'll take that picture in a minute. Because <laughs> yeah. no one listening will have a clue what that is. <laughs> no. um, so your journey took you from Dream. Mm -hmm. Had you finished at Dream before you moved to Blue Tree or did yeah. you, you had? Yeah, I was so actually planning to take a six months or one year sabbatical per se because I really wanted to take time off to travel. Haven't managed to do that. Uh, but then one month in, it was like, I think I got a phone call saying, hey, we have this position open. Would you be interested? And I had just booked a trip to Bali and I was also planning another trip a, a few months uh, down to Italy. And I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's go for the chat. Let's see what comes up. So I had coffee with the previous marketing director, the vet. And then from one coffee chat became a second coffee catch up and then it became another catch up in the office and... Then a bottle of wine at night <laughs> and then uh, yeah, breakfast in the morning <laughs> in bed. <laughs> I and mean, then all of a sudden, I, I seem to have got the job. Well done. <laughs> no, nope. you should not say that. Edit that out. <laughs> okay, yeah. I made a note of it. Yeah. But um, yeah. So you ended up getting the job at Blue Tree. Yes. So that, that was a surprise to me, actually. But in the beginning, when I, you know, had, when I was speaking to the team, I was excited by the project. Um, it, it still wasn't open at that point in time. So I thought, you know what? Let's, let's give full time one more go. Let's give it a try. Did you, want not, you didn't want to do full time then? No, I wanted didn't to want take a job. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't want to work. If I could not work, it'd be even better. Wish I could win the lottery and just be done with it. Um, but no, I just wanted to take time off to travel. I started working when I was 18, 19 years old, and it's always been full time. It's always been work, work, work. What's next? Uh, you know, quitting one job 
meant that I already had something else lined up for me. So it was just that for, I think, what, 10, 10 or 11 and years? Also, I, w- I would argue in the, your early years through Malaysia and also in Singapore, you're working for, was it, you were with an agency, right? Yeah. So it's quite fast-paced, yeah. high-level, high-energy, yeah. bang, 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 constantly. Yeah, yeah very much so. so. I mean, as, as some people say, well, it, everyone's got to work, everyone works yeah. full-time, you know, mm. watch, watch the drag. But yeah. when you put yourself in that high-pressure environment, you, at some point you kind of want to just yeah. take a breath, right? Exactly. So, and, and the funny thing is this. So when I was 17 or 18, no, I think I was 18, I actually had my very own uh, events company before oh, wow. I graduated. So I actually, so my background is actually events, right? At so 17, 18, you had your own events company. Right. What sort of things were you doing? So I was very lucky. I had a partner back then. We, so she had her own events uh, company as well. And then what happened was uh, we had a subcontract from... <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I giggled at your joke. Oh, sorry, at my own joke about you and you had a partner at 17 and she. And I then obviously, in my head, <laughs> went, together, right? okay, I'll tell said you what, the joke. No, he me, then saw me <laughs> giggle, although I was trying to suppress it. And then he started laughing <laughs> and I just couldn't help myself. But <laughs> just not to look at you. <laughs> Let me so anyway, I, I, just I actually I got there and I, I started rambling on. Yeah, just I know. To I, know. Cover <laughs> that so I, I had to. Stop. I was, Let I was me just rephrase that again. Yeah. <laughs> I will take a pause because I've got some images I need to process in my head right now. <laughs> let me, let me, oh just re- dear. let me just rephrase that. Okay. No, please don't. No, no. no. Okay, no, so not to you and your that. business partner. Yeah, so. It's all right. The joke's bus- gone there. It's gone. Yeah. Down. So me and my business partner, what, what happened was we were very lucky. Um, Carlsberg was launching their Carlsberg Gold Drink then, right? And they were looking to sub out the launch of a night party or a night opening event in Penang. So we got it. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so it was the most amazing thing because I didn't have a full-time job yet. I had no experience and suddenly Carlsberg was telling us, you know what, we like your energy, why don't you do this little project for us? If this goes well, then we'll do more. And it didn't go well then? <laughs> it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't go very well, but it was an amazing experience no, because for sure. you know, we had to put acts together, we had to put performances together. We, you know, it was all the basic stuff, but it was really a, a steep learning curve for me. Uh, learning to put schedules together and do, uh, working with promoters, working with all the bars, uh, doing at promotions the, at, and trying to get 17. people to come. Yeah, I was 17, I haven't even graduated. Yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I think so uh, I love doing events, but mm-hmm. events uh, events seem to cover, and I, uh, it's a great base mm. to then move on to marketing because events is, I mean, I always say an event is a marketing, mm. it is a branding for whatever the yeah. business is. So you're, yeah. you're learning, the, but you're learning so much from mm. events. Yeah. Organization, getting people in the right place, scheduling, like you said, you know, yeah. making sure it's a hell of yeah. a lot of work. Mm-hmm. I love events, yeah. and that's why I only do one a year. Because mm. they're a lot, a lot of work. Yeah, it's, did it's you think fulfilling. Of, did you, sorry to interrupt, but um, did you want to do more events or was it you just did, the, you had that experience like, my God, this is mental? No, so, so that was actually what spurred me on to uh, open my own events company with my business partner then. And at the same time, we also tried to start our own magazine. It lasted three months. Uh, how, many episode, how many episodes, how many copies did you get out? Let me just say that we tried to register the magazine name as Lust Magazine. Lust Magazine. I can't even remember why we even tried to do it. Was your partner at this point, was a lady as well? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what was Lust all about? Well, it was supposed to be a lifestyle magazine, right? And because um, all of the contacts that she had were bars and you know clubs and they were all looking, or, you know, during that time, everyone was spending a lot of money in print advertising. So we thought, you know, let's, let's try to do this. Let's set up, set up our own events company, try to get a lot of events done, and then try to make more money from advertising. So, you know, we, we tried that, but unfortunately, I, I guess we were really young um, and we didn't have enough experience um, the graphic designers and the sales team that we put together were also very young. So this project lasted for about a year. And I told myself, you know what? It was fun. It was great. But maybe I should just start off with corporate. You know, do the 9 to 5, gain experience and and see where that takes me. You yeah. seem to be very much a business person. I mean, you are very... I mean, I've worked with you. I mean, obviously with my 
as, as Blue Tree is one of my clients, I, you know, I, we've been in the office together, and the way, and I have seen the way you work. You are very kind of business orientated Thank you. in the way that you are, yeah. whereas I'm slightly not, not <laughs> and muck around. But you started quite young then, straight into the, mm, the business yeah. world. Right? I'm, I, I want to have yeah. a business, and I'm going to do this. Yeah. And so the, you haven't done the much to the travelling. So I guess yeah. this comes back to when you moved, left yeah. Dream. You did want it to go. Yeah. Whereas I saw the world beforehand, and then went, do you know what? I better make some money mm. now. And, and equally, in terms of um, culturally speaking, mm. you went into into a your, your full time work at a younger age. Yeah. Whereas we necessarily didn't. Yeah. So I'm still you, not. You were th- <laughs> well, yeah, that too. But you were thrust into that corporate. Yeah. And in PR, a very cutthroat. Yes. Bang, bang, bang. Oh world. yes. So and you just that's just what that's your yeah. background. That's what you carried through. Yeah. Was your family kind of pushing you to go to be more? work yeah was it work 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 no fun you must work work work. i mean i don't know what the malaysian um culture is like because like i said i've been to penang twice i've been to kl flown in walked around Mm. and then flew back out again now so my my parents are very traditional lovely um i am where i am today thanks to my parents of course so my mom was very strict growing up no sleepovers no going out no movie nights you stay home you go for tuition do extra classes, go for art classes, go for piano classes. You know, she, she was How very is your piano now? Amazing. <laughs> anyway. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that was many years ago, bro. <laughs> um, you know. I'll, Russell I'll, can I'll, play I'll be the, uh, he I'll plays be the ivories. I can remember the tune. The only one I can remember is the one that goes... <laughs> is that the oh, one? Chopsticks. Yeah. Completely off tune, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure you can call it chopsticks anymore. I don't anymore. know what it's called. Probably not. I think it's racist. Probably is. Yeah. Um, have you got brothers, sisters? Three sisters. Uh, hello. Uh. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> Four sisters. I'm the third one in the family. Yeah, well, you forget you for a minute. Yeah, I'm yeah. the best. Okay, so. Age wise of the other three? Okay, so. Younger, I'm older? Two older sisters, one younger sister. All taken, by the way. All taken? Well, that's, oh, right, anyway. that's, that's semantics. <laughs> that's semantics. <laughs> Let's move uh, on. No. So there's Cassandra, there's Veron, there's Christine, and there's Elisa. That's lovely names. Yes. So here's the thing. All of us actually don't have uh, English names in our IC, in our identification card. We chose our own English names. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah. So there's Liu Wai Han, Liu Wai Yan, Liu Wai Lam, Liu Wai Yong. Oh, there glad you, go. you got that. Um, <laughs> and where are they all? So uh, Cassandra and Veron are home in KL. Uh, my Veron? Two older, yeah, my Does two she ever play for Man U? Mm, no. Or Juventus. Okay. Or Chelsea. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. And little sister Elisa got married, so she's living in America. Congratulations, Elisa, for getting yeah. married. Yeah, actually, the last time I saw her was Big mistake last year. Last May. Mm. No, not last year. This year, actually, I haven't seen her in two years. She came home for the first time this year in February, right before lockdown <gasps> happened. Right. She was actually having difficulty getting flights back because of COVID. They kept changing her flights. Where, whereabouts in the states? Tucson, Arizona. Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah. We only like Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's next door. Is it? Yeah. Oh, but it's nice, yeah. I used to travel to Texas when I was working for an engineering company. Lovely. You must but know our really, friends. really yeah. hot. Texas is... Austin. Uh, Austin, yes, yeah, Austin. Yeah. That's right, yeah. That was where the engineering firm was uh, based in. National oh, right. Instruments, okay. yeah. Yeah, so it's quite cool. Yeah, Austin's pretty cool. Mm. So let's uh, get back on track. <laughs> yeah. Not that we've Your been sisters. on any track. Your sisters. <laughs> um, Okay, so experience at Dream was amazing. Obviously, very different lifestyle. Then you got into the yeah. Blue Tree thing. Yeah. Um, obviously, now with the whole COVID thing and different things going on, you're no longer at Blue Tree. Yeah. Um, what are you doing now? Yeah. So I'm actually working on a passion project, which um, okay. So myself and Russell, who is my business partner, uh, so we started the Vietnam food truck, but obviously with COVID and all that, that hasn't really taken off so we are working on another F&B concept still doing tastings and recipe tryouts and stuff I saw your business part the other day or actually today posting pictures of uh, mushrooms mushrooms yeah he said to me that he's trying to put mushrooms into into some sort of um, dumpling or something Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep yep we need to have an an off topic discussion about that Mm. not that type of mushrooms I don't believe (laughs) I think they're normal mushrooms. Yeah. Right. Normal okay. mushrooms. Gotcha. Yeah. Not sure what mushrooms you're talking so about. So what, what is it with the Vietnamese thing that you've, you've kind of fallen in love with? Vietnamese? Well, yeah, you just said you, got, you, you wanted a Vietnamese van and ah, the no. other 
food project. So, let's so, so I was kind of hoping that you might like Vietnamese food. If you don't, it's a shit thing to go into. <laughs> so, so this is the funny thing. So, I've known Russell for about five years now, right? And we, we get along on a lot of things. And one of the things that Russell is really good at is cooking. Yeah, he's not DJ, and that's for sure. Oh, he's a good DJ as well. Yeah. yeah. So this is a live <laughs> podcast. I have to make sure I've got his back. So he's an amazing DJ. Yeah. Mm. yeah. He's really good. Nah. Yeah. Uh-uh. Come on now, you guys back <laughs> me up. <laughs> no, but I yeah. do like him. Right. I do like. I, I have yeah. to admit, he is a he's a much better DJ than I am. What's a low um, bar? Yeah. It's a very low <laughs> bar, isn't it? No, he's a, he's a great. No, he's yeah. a great DJ. A lot. You're what listening you to DJ Russ from Phuket. Put your hands up. Shout out. Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't do that. I've got proof. I will get proof. Okay, so that's no, good. So lovely. now I've got it. Now I've got it on tape that you have been on listening. tape. On on, oh, on no, recording. I do listen. I do listen. I yeah, listen to Russell. And there's another person that you know, a girl called. Oh, I who don't know. Who is that? I'm sorry. Uh, Foxy. Foxy. Who? DJ Darren Fox. Wear some more clothes, please. Is that um, or not? <laughs> she, yeah, or not? Yeah, depending <laughs> on where you are. Um, but she's a good DJ too. Well, so that means in all fairness, though, I can turn her music down and just kind of watch, and I'm okay with that. Do you that's that terrible, Russell? isn't it? That I sounds really bad. Do you do that with Russell? Just turn it down and just watch yeah. him. I do, yeah. like, would you, I, would you watch enjoy him I do like Russell. He was really interesting to, when we interviewed him that time. and He was. Ta- I, he has got a great story about and yeah. He has DJ for some serious clubs mm. in the UK. Oh, yes, he has. So, yeah. No, and joking aside, he's a frigging good DJ. Mm. A really good DJ. He loves, he loves his music. Um, no, you can cool. tell. He's got yeah. passion about it. Yeah, he and does. Apparently he likes to cook as well. Yeah, yeah so going back. So, so yeah. you obviously are working together from the, on the food side. So how did the food thing... Yeah, so, so what happened was he actually went on a trip to Vietnam uh, to, you know, just a solo trip, mm-hmm. right? And I've been to Vietnam before, so we were talking about the kind of different foods and snacks and all that that you should try uh, when he's there. And when he came back, he had this idea, you know, like he really liked the food and he really wanted to just continue cooking it. And then the conversation just went on into, why don't we do something? Why don't we start a food truck business together? And it was easy to start a Vietnamese food concept in comparison to like uh, Singaporean or Malaysian because the ingredients were very similar to, to what you can get here in Thailand. So right. Thailand and Vietnamese ingredients, quite similar. So then that became our little project together. Cool. Yeah. So he, he loves Vietnamese food as well. I love Vietnamese food as well. And so what's happening with the little food truck at the moment? Is it on hold? Is it obviously with the whole situation with COVID and yeah. all that kind of malarkey? Yeah. So... We're trying to sell our food truck, actually. So we're trying to find a buyer for it. Lots of interest, um, even since last year. But I think, really, it's just times are bad and people are just sure. holding off from actually making a decision. So in the meantime, we are working on another concept. Is uh, it a secret? Yes, it's a secret oh. at this point in time because we, we're still in the initial stages. It's not going to be a food truck, but it's going to be an online food delivery. So the past two weeks has been intensive food tasting, Dumpling after dumpling after that dumpling. That just sounds excuse just to go and eat. <laughs> yes. Hey Russ, I've got a great idea. Let's yeah. start a craft beer company. Mm. But what we should f- do first mm. is go and try every single beer at every single bar in mm-hmm. Phuket. Not that yeah. I'm drinking at the moment. Yeah. Although I we did have a few I beers. I really, really wish I could tell you the different things that we're trying. No, it, it's great. I have but seen I you. Wait, wait till we launch. Okay, you've, right. been, till we you've launch. been to a lot of brunches and you've been posting a lot of stuff about food. Mm-hmm. So I, I, yeah. I either thought that you're just showing showing off the fact you're not working and you can <laughs> just go to all these places. No, not really. So the other thing that's happening for me as well is that I'm also starting up my own marketing agency. The one thing that I've learned during COVID is that I don't want to be uh, in Employed. a position or, or to be stuck in one place. And it's been really encouraging, actually, since um, when people knew that I've actually left my role at Blue Tree, I've you know received quite a few calls from people calling me up saying, "Hey, Christine, are you doing anything now? You know what? I need help with this. Could you help me out with that?" And one to two phone calls became like at least five phone calls a week, and I thought to myself, "You know what? I have something here. Maybe it's time to stop looking at full time or corporate stuff or." Uh, you know, trying to get a position at places where I want to travel to, maybe I can do something that will allow me to travel myself. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what spurred me on. So, I'm also in the initial stages, design, website development, logos and stuff. So, hopefully in the next three to four weeks, it'll be ready to And that launch. is a, a marketing agency. Marketing so, you're, agency, you're going yeah. to businesses and say, hey, 
I'm a marketing agency, employ me and we'll take care of all your marketing for you. Have yeah. you got a certain clientele you're looking at or are you going to go mm. big company, corporate, smaller businesses? No. Da, 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 da. So the idea for Just me trying to really steal your ideas. Go on, go. Mm-mm. No, you, you won't be able to. You're not as pretty as me. Uh. <laughs> Remember, I'm the editor of this podcast. Right, make sure you keep that in then. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so I think really the idea was when I, I started getting all these phone calls, my first answer and my first reaction was, sure, I would love to help you. And really the idea was to do something that I could help people with, especially during this time where you know, people don't have the budget um, or, or the funds to actually invest in hiring a full-time or in hiring an agency to help them do what they want. Um, so it will really be focused on you know, um, facilitating or nurturing the relationship um, between the brands and their customers at an affordable price, I would say. Along those lines, still working on it. I think you'll do very well because you are a Thank smart you. cookie. And you've also, you're, you're very able, and I've, I've, I've watched you work, you're, you're very able <laughs> to speak English to <laughs> start with. Why do you laugh at able? And actually to use Don't the right words. Smirk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean like that. I was just laughing at how bad I am at speaking uh, at the moment. Um, yeah. But you can also, you can put yourself out there from a business point of view and you can hold yourself in a meeting and you can hold yourself. And, and that's something that I've watched you do. Wow. And thinking, wow, that's, you know, she knows how to hold herself. Whereas I walk into a business meeting. To and I'm fair, just like, you know how to hold this thing. I, I have not allowed to, but let you know me how tell you, to. Let me tell you the story of how I met Jay. So, so when um, I went into the office uh, to, I, I think, to sign the papers and I was being introduced to the team, um, I, I can't remember who was it that, that said, you know what, you should speak to Jay Lashak. And the thing is, living in Phuket for four years, since, you know, that, back then it was four years, four years, I've always seen the name Jay Lashak appear in recommended friends on Facebook. <laughs> and, and we have a lot of mutual friends in common, but we've just never crossed paths. And then it, it, when, when someone said, oh, you should meet Jay. Jay is our marketing consultant. You know, you need to speak to him. He's, he's a good one to know. And I was like, all right, where's this Jay? Get to meet him. Yeah. So you know what I did? So after I, I, I was done with the introductions in the office, I was like, okay, so where do I find Jay Lashak? And I actually went over to the HR room and I saw you seated next to the CFO and I was like, wow, he's sitting next, he's sitting next to Dave. I was like, I must meet this guy. <laughs> Check you out. I know, right? But Jay was very serious. The Jay I met on the first day is not the Jay. The, that you know. The, 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 yeah, exactly. Was it's I? Like, no, you, you were really serious and you were like, um, hi, it's lovely to meet you. Yeah, looking forward to have you on board. You were really serious and I was like, oh, wow. I was he being must, polite. He, he's, Jay something like it was the classic what do you mean, Jay? I know <laughs> <laughs> Jay, I am something <laughs> it was a classic yes, case yes, yes, you are. good looking woman in front of him shut mm. down um, um, hello yes <laughs> hi uh huh mm, yeah and then Chrissy well, walked I in and I was like yeah. oh I love how you do you know <laughs> what I mean um, how you doing I don't remember that and that was only a, a few months ago <laughs> You, you were still sitting in a finance office then? In, in yeah, I don't HR know what office. I was doing in the HR office, probably flirting with someone, I'd yeah, imagine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, uh, and, and you know, bef- before I actually started, like before my official first day, everyone that I spoke to in, in the management said, oh, speak to Jay, he'll be able to share more with you. And I was like, I, re- I really must know Jay. I, I really must get to know him. You should get to know me more. Yeah, now that I know you. Hmm. It's a bit harsh, <laughs> isn't it? No, no you're very I nice, Jay. I think we have both, uh, I think we both have a, a similar outlook yeah. on marketing. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, we do. I think we whether see we deliver it in a, yeah, and I, I think we probably deliver it in a slightly no, similar but different way. Mm. But I think our outlook on marketing has always been there. Yeah. And, and it's similar when we've worked together. I've always kind yeah. of said, yeah, I get what you're saying and yeah. I, you get what I say. Yeah, absolutely. If, I'm not sure any of what we said ever happened, yeah. but I think our outlook of what we mm. expected and what we would like to do yeah. is definitely similar. Yeah, d- definitely. Of, in terms of concept for your, your agency, your own agency, yeah. and rolling it forward, appreciating it's very difficult to plan right. given the current climate. But mm. take that aside for a moment. What's your, your vision over mm. the coming years? I mean, do you, are you happy to be based here in Phuket? Are you looking to reach further afield? Right. Mm. I mean, you can have clients ready anyway, couldn't you? So. Yeah. So, so actually, right now, while I'm setting up my agency, I am working on a few projects for a, sm- a few small businesses. Um, we, I've got a food truck, I've got a fashion brand. I think you guys may have seen my Facebook. I've been posting a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also got two small uh, hotels in, in the works as well. I can't mention names. There's an amazing yeah. dog resort as well. 
I yeah. forget the name of the place. Yeah, I don't anyway. know. What was that? Canine Point Academy. Was it Point? Point? Was it point? Yeah. Yes, Canine Point. I'm surprised people don't know about <laughs> it. I <laughs> say it enough on yeah. the stupid <laughs> podcast. But yeah, so, so just working on little projects like that, uh, just to kind of keep myself in the know of things and just keep the momentum going, you know, not, not just take time off, set up agency and not do any work at sure, all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I, I guess while I'm still here during this climate, it will be to really help businesses continue doing marketing. And it's, you know, a, a lot of people think, oh, you know, for marketing, you need to have funds, you need to have budget. If you don't have budget, you can't do marketing. That's not true. Um, a lot of the marketing work I've done before, um, I, I didn't have budget for. I, I had yeah, to yeah. work my way through it anyway. So Just muddle it up. Yeah. And in terms of longer term, are you, mm. how long have you been in Phuket now? Five years. Five years. So yeah. are, you, are you considering that you know this is my base, or is it the potential that we might you know, move on further afield, different places at some time, or you know what? Um, I'm definitely looking to move, not not because of anything, but because I want to travel or experience a, yeah. a new place. So I did consider Bali at one point, um, but Vietnam, you know, is up and coming it's right now. Yeah, so a move to Vietnam is very possible. I actually just got off a phone call with a. Uh, PR agency, a partner, uh, who you know we would likely discuss the possibility of the of me representing them in Vietnam. So cool. yeah, so lots of exciting things yeah. in the works actually. Excellent. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you look very pensive there, Joe. Yeah. Well, I'm just worried that Foxy will go to Vietnam, and then my chances for my I was about to say something very. I've been telling yeah. you, Jay, brush up on your Russian. I have brushed up on my Russian. When we interviewed her, I, I said to her. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> I will break you. He's like iron. <laughs> and she gave us the worst look yeah. and had no, no idea, idea what we were talking about. Yeah. Even when I said it was from Rocky, she was like that. Nothing. No. Stone face, normal she's look. She's like iron. Yeah. That's <laughs> Russian. No, she's lovely. There you go. Oh, um, you lovely. also have a passion for dogs. Tell us about your dogs. I've always had dogs. When I was growing up, so my dad loves German Shepherds, so I've had Three I German like Shepherds. Oh, there you go, yeah. So we had three. We had, I, I can't remember the names now. We had three and Rover. Then, did, did they have no, English no. names? Steve. No, no. <laughs> Brian. Did they? D4. No, the D4 first one. Is the, best the first name one, for we a had dog. an English name for it. We had one D4. called Wrecker. Sorry, D4. 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 Come here, D4. Really? D4 dog. That sounds like a lottery name, no. like some sort of lottery name for me. What's wrong with D4? Shit. What's a good dog name? Lots Jay. Of, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of good dog names. What's mm. a terrible dog name? Tell me. D4. <laughs> what about some other dog names? I wanted to have a dog called Shark and just take him for and teach him how to swim. Yeah, if you had a dog named Shark, hmm, nah. I think Shark's a good name for a dog. Shark's a, it depends on the dog. Like if you had a bull terrier called Shark, that'd be brilliant. Hmm. The bull terrier, is that the one with the long... Yeah, the shark, yeah, shark looking one. Yeah. Don't like that one. Uh, anyway, but no, just, sorry, going back okay. to your dog love. You mm -hmm. also, and I'm going to put this out yeah. there for anyone who wants um, Chrissy to help me out with marketing. She also loves dogs and she was over at the dam feeding the dogs during the COVID thing. We have to get that out there. Yeah, right, please well do. Done. Yeah, and so then you're moving to Vietnam. You're taking the dogs with you? No, no, hang on. No, no, no. We can't <laughs> do that. No. What so do you mean you can't do that? They'll probably pay you to take them over. No, it's, it's just too much. It, it, it's too much. Yeah, they got too many there already. The time. To be honest, and the yeah. thing is this. So, so we rescued... Okay, let me tell you how it happened. So we saw, four, good, we, we saw four puppies that were obviously left at the sala at the reservoir, right? So they were just... They, they looked so skinny and we thought, you know what? We, we can't just leave them there. So we went home, brought food, brought water, and we were doing it for about a week. So me and Darren and Russ, we, we walked our dogs. Every day, twice a day at the reservoir. After one week, we were like, hang on, this isn't right. Like, uh, no, it, it seems that no one was going to take care of them or take them on. We, we, we just couldn't leave them there. And we had two dogs of our own, right? So we thought, ah, oh, you know what? Let's just take these puppies back and let's just give them a bath. Gave them a bath? Like a bath, like, you know, just, yeah, just, just, just to clean them up. Because these puppies are brown and white. But when we saw when they were left, when they were just left there, they were brown in color, like fully brown. So that became from one day, and then we kept them for another day, and then lockdown happened. Right, and when lockdown happened, what happened was the reservoir also uh, was closed off. It was out of your area, so you couldn't get there. Exactly. So we couldn't. So we were like, okay. It was fate. Yeah. You saved four puppies' lives. I know. Do you know how? I like puppies. 
they are really really cute you know when you're playing Puppies. with them mm -hmm. mm, but when they chew your shoes and your slippers well, and your car seats you should listen. and your sofas and your duvets and your tables and your chairs well then you should train them now so no, so it was... It no, was, no, no, we're not going to train them. No, 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 it, it wasn't about that. It was just, you know, there were puppies and I think someone had... It was very obvious that they were well taken care of for a, for, for a while because they were very um, engaged with, with us when we actually took them back, right? And there were puppies and I think having been left out there for like, I don't know, a couple of weeks, they, they were just craving a lot of attention. So every time we even looked away in the very beginning, they, they couldn't take it. They would just keep trying to get our attention and kept trying to get us to, to, you know, look at them and play with them. But it all got better within a week. You know, once we got into a routine of, okay, in the morning we're going for walks, after walks you get a little snack, and then you get a little nap, and then we're going for a walk again, and then we go home, and then you sleep. That was it. That was, that was good. And Russell from Canine Point Academy, I must say, really, really helped. You gave some really good tips to us. Like for example, when you mentioned that Chewy was like an anxious mm. dog, I was I was actually shocked. I was like, no. You were saying at the time. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, and Chewy anxious, but then when you said that and I followed the tips that you gave me, she got so much better. She has stopped barking at night. Cool. She 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 really has, and and I was just shocked, and I was like, just a little bit more attention and uh, detail to you know what they were what they were doing made a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, and a, a lot of times it's not about. It's not the problem isn't the giving of the attention it's the problem of the timing of mm. that attention and that was just kind yeah. of what that was really yeah exactly so. yeah so even even leah as well like all of them like uh, listen to commands now to say it and snacks and, and and they just know that they're so much more trained mm -hmm. yeah imagine if we sent them to you for training they'll be like perfect awesome. dogs if yeah. you need a professional dog trainer or <laughs> someone to keep your dog short or long term then contact caninepointacademy.com Go. People know it's .com. Yeah. They're not going to search yeah, yeah. .com. And, and, I, and I have to share this as well. So Lucky, who's our own dog. This is not Rus It's not all about Russell and his no, amazing no, no, training. No, no, no. I have to say this. No, no, no. I have to okay. say this. Right. So we've Get him never sat a little grin on his face. We've though. never been able to go for any holiday, even for a day, and come back to Lucky, not having uh, or not being anxious or anxiety. Never, Stressed. never. She was. She would always be stressed when we leave her for holidays, right? So that's why whenever we, we went for holidays, we always had to take turns. Like, if I was going away, then Darren would stay home. If Darren wanted to go somewhere, then I'll have to stay home, just so that someone is always there. When did I get the phone call, Darren's at home alone, you can go now? Uh, yeah, that's wishful I thinking, known, mate. I should have, because I'm there with the binoculars <laughs> yeah. up in the window. Darren Fox. Well, technically, you do know where I'm staying now, but that doesn't give you the allowance. I don't it. know where you live. Hey. I've never been to a house. Didn't didn't you guys work on some voice recording? No, I'm still waiting to record. I'm I'm, it's another project. Anyway, it's an affair podcast. Uh, uh, Russell's got a question for you. Oh, go on. So, uh, I'm guessing I know the answer to want to. The, well, I think I know the answer to the first part of the question. But what sort of things are on your bucket list? <gasps> you guys got laugh. <laughs> I want oh. to see Britney Spears live again. Excuse me. I'm a huge fan of Britney Spears. Nothing wrong with that. Like major huge fan of Britney Spears. Did you Spears. see her with a shaven head or <laughs> pre or post shaven head? I love her. Shave, shaven head or not. Really? I, I've l I just love Britney Spears. So when Britney Spears came to Singapore for, for a concert, I got VIP tickets. I think it cost me 600 Sing dollars, which is about 500 USD for shit seatings. But it was the best concert what, is it I've ever been her, to. Her, her, the way that she came up through Disney and she's grabbed hold of her life and she's yeah. produced some great music. D do you hate Christine Aguilera because of Britney? No, I don't actually. I'm Ooh, a fan of them both. Christina. But here's the thing, right? So I, I guess I really like Britney because she's really confident and she's been through so much. Oh, you sound huh. like a teenage when girl. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh God. I, I really do. like Britney. Hit she's me, been from so much one in her more life. Time. <laughs> she went from Disney to being a pop and then she shaved her head. She went mental, yeah. but she's all right now. Doesn't matter she's what right you now. say, her I'm still great. a Britney fan. What's your favourite album? Oh, the first one. 
<laughs> I had to I had to say that because I knew you were gonna ask me a different. Oh, great, I knew you one. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Nah, but no, the, the first album definitely, and 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 also because. Is it the lyrics in a song that means something to you? Hit me, baby, one more time. Is that, that just, uh, but it was it's, it's also it's I also did it again. no no, but it's also a childhood thing. So my mom loves Britney Spears as well. Like my mom doesn't really listen to much English uh, music. Like she loves all her Chinese and Cantonese songs, but Britney Spears was one. So she bought every single. Britney Spears album, and it's also kind of like a, a memory or kind of like a flashback when I listen to uh, Britney songs. It was also me and my mom spending time, you know, in 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 the in the house and just listening and watching all her videos. So so that kind of links back to my mom as well. Do you hate Justin Timberlake? I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I really do. You He's a dude. Well, you must like him because he was in Trolls. No, that's not, that's that's the, that's the one irk I have. I'm not a big Timberlake fan, but then. I'm a big, big fan of Charles. He was very epic. funny. And he was very good in it. And he was very mm. funny. He's been on SM, SNL a few yes. times. Which I don't watch. Oh, okay. Well, he's been I on that. And he's actually yeah, quite yeah. funny when he no, does his comedy No, I don't get Justin. He's not good looking. I don't think he's a good singer. I also don't think he's a good performer. I really don't. Have you watched Trolls? No. You're missing out because Trolls is mm. epically brilliant. Justin Timberlake acts. Mm. X right there. Okay, so uh, apart from so <laughs> apart from Britney Spears, rubbing shoulders with Britney Spears yeah. or other body parts are yeah. available. Okay, can we be there for that? Um, yeah. So what else is on your bucket list? The other thing would be to <laughs> travel around Italy with Britney Spears, if that's possible. Yeah. But no, to me, all the hot Italian she guys there. She was in there, the paper two <laughs> days ago, Britney. Sorry, I'm what going back to it. I read something about how she's getting rid of her dad as her manager, and she's got someone else because she felt that her dad wasn't manager correctly. Mm. Anyway, uh, yeah. Italy. What is it about Italy you love? No, just the culture, and it, it was just—it's just one of those places that I've never been to. Read a lot about it, see amazing pictures, and really want to discover it. I did my very first solo travel out of Asia uh, to New York, in, in the US. So I spent. I think most people know where New York is. Yeah, five about. <laughs> I spent five nights there before traveling to Arizona to meet my sister. I'm sorry, what's this got to do with Italy? No, so it was it was little in New York. In New York. Ah, okay. No, it was, what Past I little China. Uh, so so when right. I was when I was in New York, right, Big and trouble. I was traveling alone and Come I was walking on. everywhere, I did meet a lot of different people, and I met this Italian guy. Of course you did in New York. They're all Italian, yeah. for Christ's sake. Yeah. So so I, hey. I met him hey. at a. Hey. <laughs> hey. Ciao Bella. Did on they the say Ciao Bella? Yeah. I want to preach. Oh, he did. <laughs> um, but Is that yeah. Italian? It was, more, it was more sort of... Um, New, hold on, I'll get, me into, I'll get into it. New York. New, no, I can't do it. I oh, can't do it. You were yeah. close. Was New I? York. New York. Peach. Mm. No, 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 I mm. can't do it. Go on. Mm. So you went to I Little Italy. Met him. Met, met, an, met an Italian guy in Starbucks. And it, I was just there to grab a cup of coffee and, and uh, before walking around. But... I met him, we were queuing up for coffee together, then we started chatting and he was telling me about all these beautiful one places Canada, where he's from. Of Italian wine. And yeah, and I, and I was thinking to myself, you know what? And, and I was in that mode, I was like, oh, solo travel in New York. <laughs> yeah, what mood are you in? Travelling. What? Oh, tra what were you Hold thinking on. about, no, Jay? Sex. I was in. Um, if you're in a. Queue, <laughs> you're always in the mood no, for sex. If, yes, I am. Um, but my, my, my point being is, if I'm in a queue at Starbucks, I'm not going to start. I don't start conversations with people. Say so, hey. Sometimes. No, I don't. No, that's the beauty of no, people, solo, oh, no, solo travel. people do sometimes. Oh, do they? Yeah. yeah. Uh. No, no, you do because I you're, 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 not, you're not with someone. You're not distracted with a conversation with this friend that you're with. You're I wouldn't talk to someone. You're, you're actually more observant of your surroundings. Yes. Right. I mean, yes. Hence why I wouldn't talk to somebody. There was a hot Italian guy and I was like... Oh, now you missed... That's the bit you didn't <laughs> say. You didn't say it was a I hot Italian guy. Most Italian guys are hot. That was a hot Italian guy that I met. <laughs> and it was all going really well until he said, you're some hot Singaporean chick. And you're like, I'm not Singaporean, yeah. damn it. <laughs> and that was the end of that. Yeah, let's not go into a conversation about that. But yeah, but so that, that was how it started. He was just, it was just that one hour conversation that really stuck in my one mind. One hour in the queue for start? What were you getting? That was a hell of a coffee. Yeah, we weren't, I mean, we were queuing and then we decided to sit down and have a chat. There's so much more to this story. Yeah. No, they can it, see it, it now. It, 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 cool. <laughs> it was a Breakfast. nice, friendly one-hour chat, and we went on our separate ways. Good. Yeah. Good. I'm yeah, glad but that you was did. That. So yeah. Italy. Any plans? Anything plans to go, or are you gonna just? It's one. It's on your list. Yeah, it's on my list for can, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did. I did want to go uh, last year, but Blue Tree happened, so I postponed my trip. And obviously, with everything happening this year, well, you know what? 
I'll, I'll be happy to get on a plane anytime soon. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Britney Spears, Italy. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? Ooh. Jinx, oh. stereo. There's a lot actually. Uh, oh, that's Christ. what I can think of for now. Yeah, but the main ones. Well, look, it has been a random conversation. A super random for, conversation, actually. Um, probably one of the most random ones we've had. Yeah. I'm super excited for you, in all fairness, because obviously I've seen your, you. your journey in the last year or so through Blue Tree. Um, yeah. That's very I, nice to hear. And I know what it's been like. Yeah. Um, up and down boost. for everybody. And I think that, y- it, you know, you're spreading your wings and it is time for you kind of to go and see what you can do. Why are you um, laughing, why Russ? Why are you laughing at that, Russ? I was trying to be serious yeah. then. He was saying something very motivational. I, I really was. Yeah, encouraging really and lifting. Oh, yeah. You, you oh, I've got one of them right now. Um, this is also a very different J from the J that I work with in the office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure yeah. I can well, go. The J shark. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yes. Good luck with your new A. Thank a- a- you. A- I'll say it again. <laughs> I got all excited. <laughs> Good luck with your new business. Thank Endeavor. you very was much. Really it was Endeavour I was looking <laughs> yeah. for, you're right. Um, do you have a name for the company yet or is that still a secret? Secret. That's secret. a good name. Yeah. Secret. It's a secret. Sh- 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 uh, thank you, Christine. Yeah. Thank you very much, Russell and Jay, for having, having me. me. Thank you for um, being here and, and good luck to the, the future of dogs in Vietnam, Italy and Britney Spears. Ching ching, cross fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. See you later. Bye. Bye. Uh, that was a podcast. This is the outro. Finally. Yes. Um, right, so that was Christine Liu. Great podcast. <laughs> you haven't listened back to it, and this is like three days later. No, but I remember it. Don't for lie. A long, I know people I know. <laughs> yes, people do know, but to be fair... There's two things that we should mention. Firstly, it was a really good podcast, and I remember it despite the fact we're three days removed from it because she was great. It and was because random. there was so much editing, I think you've had to do <laughs> to cut yeah. a few bits and pieces out. But it was a terrific podcast. Yes, it was. She's an interesting character, actually. She's, do you know what? She is very business orientated. Yeah. Um, and she's very professional. She's got a very Singaporean mindset. She'll love me for saying that. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Christine. Oh, no. Singaporeans, they're lovely. (laughs) Um, No, I I do like her. And I did work with her at Blue Tree for a bit. And um, it was interesting because, yeah, she is quite serious sometimes with the way that she does work, whereas I'm not. Yeah, but also there's there's a balance of, you know, some people are either they're serious the whole time or they're just like us and just completely goofy the whole time. You're no, you're not goofy. You're very serious. uh, Yeah, but... She's she's very much for, for me in the, in the short space of time I've known her got that switch like all right I'm having a laugh we're having fun I can just do this we can keep no it that's away. true or I'm in work mode and I'm in work mode no that's true which is kind of cool and she does it very well yeah yeah so and again, I, and I haven't well. really seen her good you talked over my little yes sexist I did. Yeah, yeah, comment yeah, yeah. That you <laughs> says she's a pretty little <laughs> she's a pretty little thing isn't she <laughs> lovely girl she is mmm uh, girls. I shouldn't do that, no, should you I? You shouldn't really, no. no. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're at, um, Russell, we're back at the old... We're back at the original yeah. K9 Point Academy, where K-9 it all Point started. Academy, where it all started, and you've made me a lovely coffee. Thank you, my coffee. Are you enjoying your coffee? I am, actually, yeah. Good. It is nice. Um, that was the podcast. It was the podcast. It was good. Like Who have we got coming up next? Um, I think it's just us, isn't it? No, 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 no. We got Sophie. Oh, I sent you Sophie. this last night. You, <laughs> you're a douchebag. <laughs> We've got Sophie Govan it's from um, Star Anise Tapas Bar. It's not called, it's called Anise, I think. Tapas Bar. Anise, yes. Yeah, she's coming up. She's a lovely chick. She'll be mental, I think. That's going to be a mental podcast. I don't think she will be mental. I think she is mental. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Lovely chick. Cool. Um, follow us on Facebook. Like us on Instagram. Follow Phuket us on podcast. Twitter. Or just go to PhuketPodcast.com. Sweet. That's all there. Thanks, Russell. Cheers, oh, buddy. sorry. We should just promote your K9 Point Academy. If you want your dog trained or if you want somewhere for your dog to stay in a luxury resort, check out K9Point.com. Kenapointacademy.com. See, I say that and then you moan at me. You've dropped the academy, (laughs) bitch. Bye, Russell. Bye, buddy.